He's been to a place that none of us can even imagine, to hell on earth and back again. Dave Crockett has seen a darkness beyond darkness, a darkness of sight and of soul. Well, dear God, whoever finds this, I don't know. Oh, you can't see this, I'm sure it's, it's too dark. I've left the car behind. <laughs> hey, Jim, buddy. Good, how are you doing? He worked with these people years ago. They knew him as a young man. They all know his story. He's come back to say hello to them and to the mountain. He was drawn to it like a moth to a flame once, and it very nearly destroyed him. <laughs> Oh, dear God, my God, this is hell. I just can't describe it, it's pitch black. Just pitch black, this is, this is hell on earth I'm walking through. Oh, God. Came down and came up around behind me. The man and the mountain are intertwined, locked together in a quiet dance, a silent tug of war that's lasted 30 years. I feel very privileged to have been here that day, believe it or not. Even though I came close to losing my life, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. News 4 crews are on the scene not only on top of this peak. For this weeks, time, St. Helens no had rumbled and what, burped. What Como involved? crews, including Dave right Crockett, there. covered the story. But when Como decided to pull their crews from the mountain and let their sister station in Portland handle it, Dave was angry. And when he woke up at 3 a.m. on May 18, 1980, afraid he would miss out on the story of a lifetime, he knew he had to go. Just, I, I guess you call it a hunch. I just had a feeling something was going to happen down here. When he got there, as he somehow knew it would, the mountain erupted. He was confused at first, then awestruck, frightened, and exhilarated at the same time. And then the mountain came after him with a churning flood of boulders, trees, and mud. There was a wild race through the valley, the man in his news car against a 30-foot wall of death. There was no outrunning it, so he turned up an old logging road. They took a left, left-hand churn right under us here, and uh, the road blew out in front of me. I tried to back up and the road behind me was gone. In the whole valley, there was one spot that wasn't destroyed, one little patch. It was the spot where his car rested. By now, the heavens above the Mercury Monarch were a furious, seething vision of rage. He left a note on the hood and then took off on foot. It wasn't long before the sun was blotted out, day became night, and Dave Crockett's world turned into an apocalyptic vision of hellfire and ash. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Does anybody copy this unit? It's Portable 5, mayday, mayday, mayday. Today, the car sits behind a roadside cafe called the 19 Mile House. It used to be a tourist attraction, but no one comes to look at it anymore. The two of them hadn't been together in a long time. Wow. Poor old girl. He didn't expect to feel anything when he saw it. He was wrong. I guess you saved my life, though. As you can tell, probably from this picture, I'm walking towards the only light I can see on top of a ridge. I can hear the mountain behind me rumbling. I never really thought I'd believe this or or say this, but at this moment, I honest to God believe I'm dead. He wasn't dead, nor would he be. When I finally realized I had made it and I was gonna live, I just started laughing and screaming out loud and just yelling at the mountain. He made it to a cliff and snapped a couple of pictures, including this wild-eyed self-portrait. And has any man ever felt smaller than he did at this moment? A speck of humanity face to face with the belching, spewing fury. It must have felt like he was staring into the angry, gaping maw of God himself. I had a ringside seat for the rest of the day. I just got to sit on a cliff and uh, feel the earth move, the earthquakes, and watch the mountain erupt. Uh, just right there in front of me. Um, 
It was just, I, the word awesome is overused, but it was, it was awesome, it was just beautiful. The rest of us are left to wonder, what's it do to a man when the whole world blows up in his face? I went through a period of time where uh, nightly dreams, um, just this feeling of just, just impending doom just rushing in on me at, in my sleep. Um, but it gets better over time. Religious fanatics hounded him, psychics, wackos. There were random marriage proposals. They all wanted a piece of him. They thought he was touched by God. He had a tough time. Survivor's guilt, they called it then. Post-traumatic stress disorder is the name we use now. He says he's past all that now, and so he came to face the mountain again, to tell it the same thing he told it up on that cliff 30 years ago. You didn't get me. I got the wrong attitude here. That's to be something to tell my grandchildren about. <laughs> oh, man. He has come to terms with this place and that day and what it meant and what it didn't mean. The mountain is changed forever, but it's still there. The same goes for Dave Crockett. To put it very oversimplified, I feel, I feel pretty comfortable with the whole thing now, with the whole experience. Dear God, whoever finds this, I don't know, oh, you can't see this, I'm sure it's, it's too dark. I've left the car behind, the rest of the gear, we got one magazine, and as you can tell probably from this picture, I'm walking towards the only light I can see on top of a ridge. I can hear the mountain behind me rumbling. It's an enormous mud and water, so I came down and washed out the road. I never really thought I'd believe this or, or say this, but at this moment, I honest to God believe I'm dead. There's really no, no way to describe those feelings. I feel the ash now in my eyes. It's getting very hard to breathe, burnt to breathe. I'm having trouble talking. It burns to breathe. It burns my eyes. <laughs> oh, dear God. My God, this is hell. I just can't describe it. It's pitch black. Just pitch black. This is, this is hell on earth I'm walking through. Oh, God. One step at a time, if I can just keep walking. God, if I can let there's some more air to breathe. Oh, yeah. Huh. Fuck. <laughs> I'm not turning the camera off like I promised I would. Fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. Well, it's been about 10 minutes. It's now totally pitch black. I can't see to keep on walking. I guess I'm just gonna have to sit down here and wait it out. God, I pray to God that's all I'm doing is sitting here waiting it out. Oh dear God, it's very, very hard to breathe in this. I can't see a thing. If only I could keep walking, you know, only if I could do something. If only I could do something, you know, instead of just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong attitude here. I mean, this would be something to tell my grandchildren about. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I 
Uh, I'm turn the camera off. Maybe I'll have, hopefully I'll be coming back and talking to you later. It's a little bit of break. I'm getting a little gray. I'm gonna keep walking again. Start walking again. Here goes. Wish me luck. If only, only this air would clear for two minutes. Give me a clean, clear breath of air. I don't know what's in this stuff, man. I can tell you one thing. It's, this stuff is not made for humans to breathe. I'm sitting down resting. I, I just can't breathe. I only walked about 50 feet since I talked to you last. God, if it just give me a break. Just one five minute run for it. Well, I'm trying the radio. So I'm on the portable. I think I can get out of here. Here goes. I don't know why I'm recording this, but and well, here goes. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Does anybody copy this unit? It's portable five. Mayday, mayday, mayday. My God, I didn't realize how badly I wanted to live. Oh, I want to live so bad. It's completely, completely black in here again. I can't see, can't see a foot in front of my face. The ash is coming down very heavy on me. The breathing isn't getting any harder. That's, that's encouraging. It's, it's hard, but it's, it's not getting any harder. It's either gotten very dark in here or <laughs> it's a horrible thought or else I'm blind. I don't know what's in this stuff. I can feel it falling on me. Can't see anything. God, I want to live. You know, Shram, you were right. <laughs> you were right, Shram. When I saw that mountain go, I turned that car around and I could see in the rear view mirror, you know, I could see the stuff coming. There was no way I was going to outrun that. I just parked that car and I started running for high ground. And that mud flow came down. It came within three feet of the car, man, with trees trees and boulders and things, you know, five times as big as that news car, Shram. <sighs> oh, about 50 feet from me. My God, you were right. Never should have come up here, you were right. <sighs> I still say I'm gonna live to tell my grandchildren about this, so. <laughs> with God's help, with God's help I am. Well, I gotta conserve film again. Mayday, mayday, mayday. God, I can see a little bit now.